Hey y'all, welcome to Ms. Clark's chemistry class. This is the second lesson in a series about states of matter. This lesson here, most specifically about the properties of liquids, especially water. Water is a funky molecule and we're gonna learn all about it. So go grab your notes, grab something to write with. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. You don't wanna miss any videos that I have coming out about this topic. Let's get started. While we're talking about the properties of liquids, we're really going to be talking a lot about water. So I also put that in the title. The first property we're going to talk about is density. Normally liquids are less dense than their solid counterpart, except water. That's what makes water so special. Water, let's look at these molecules. This is water. This is ice. When it's water, they're just all kind of jumbled up. Now they're being held on to each other with hydrogen bonds, those intramolecular forces, but they're all kind of a big, just called jumbled. When you freeze them and make ice, it makes this very geometric shape. And you see these blank spaces in between, they fill with air. And when they fill with air, it causes ice to be less dense. Let's think about that for a second. Let's think about the world and the oceans and the glaciers. What would happen if ice sank? We would have a flooded earth. If all the glaciers sunk to the bottom of the ocean, we would hardly have any land mass. If we think about smaller bodies of water, like lake, if when the temperature got really low, if the ice formed on the bottom of the lake instead of the top of the lake, we could not have any wildlife. Just because the lake gets really cold doesn't mean all of the wildlife dies. Since the ice is on top, it kind of acts as an insulator and keeps the rest of the lake down below an okay temperature for the wildlife to continue. The next property of liquids we're gonna talk about is viscosity. Now viscosity, the definition of that is resistance to flow. I always like to use the practical example of like honey or syrup. If you think about turning this honey over, we're gonna pour some honey out onto our biscuit and honey, it pours very slowly that's because it's viscous. Or if we're just gonna pour out water, water pours out much more quickly. If you know anything about motor oil, you know they come in different weights. We've got our test tubes and they're filled with motor oil. One is at five weight, one is at 10 weight, 20 weight, and 30 weight. And if we drop the marble down into this motor oil, the five weight oil is going to be the thinnest. It's going to be the least viscous. We drop that marble in and it's just going to go straight to the bottom. Now our 10 weight motor oil, it's a little bit more viscous or it's a little bit thicker. If we were to drop that marble in, it might hover somewhere near the bottom, but not all the way to the bottom because it's a higher viscosity. 10 weight, that marble is going to hover even higher because again, the motor oil is more viscous or you could think about it being thicker. 30 weight, that marble might just sit right close to the top. Viscosity decreases as the temperature increases. Let's go back and think about our honey. We're trying to pour our honey out of the container and it is so slow, it's taking forever. If we plop that thing into the microwave, heat it up for a few seconds and then pour it, it practically runs out like water. So viscosity is going to decrease as the temperature increases. Okay, so our next property of liquids we're gonna talk about is surface tension. Now surface tension can get pretty complex and I tried to break it down as easy as I could to make it the most understandable. But surface tension is an effect that strengthens the surface of a liquid, surface tension. So the reason why the surface is strengthened is because the molecules attract each other all around, but the molecules at the surface, at the top, they're going to only have molecules to attract on either side and below. I'm gonna explain this a little bit better in just a second. Just remember that the molecules attract each other all around equally, but the molecules on the surface have a net inward force, creating what we would call like a skin. Have you ever noticed if you jump into a swimming pool Let's say you belly flop into a swimming pool, but you just do it from the side. Of course it hurts. All belly flops hurt. But let's say you go up to the high dive and you belly flop. That is going to be terrible. It might even knock the breath out of you. And it's because of the surface tension of the water. 
The force that holds the water molecules at the surface of the water of the swimming pool, they hold together a little bit stronger. So when your belly hits the top of that surface, it really holds together for a second and hurts you bad. The reason why water specifically out of all of the liquids has such a high surface tension is because water is held together with those hydrogen bonds. And remember, hydrogen bonds is the strongest intramolecular force. Now I've said intramolecular forces, I think a couple of times in this video. If you're like, what is that? Go back and check out that video. I have one that just talks about intramolecular forces. Okay, let's get a little bit more specific. Let's talk about those molecules and that attraction. So if we have a water molecule and a water molecule and a water molecule, let's just draw some water molecules. Now, this water molecule here, H2O, it's going to be attracted to this one. There's gonna be some attraction to that one, this one. There's probably some down below here, here. Let's draw that one down below. This water molecule here has an equal force to all of the water molecules all around it. And so do all of these central water molecules. But let's say up here at the top, these water molecules, you know, they're attracted this way, they're attracted this way, but they're like doubly attracted here. So since there's no other water molecules up top for them to be attracted to, it's almost like they double down. They double down their attraction here and they really pull into themselves. Let's think about an overall pull. This water molecule here, it's equal all around, but these water molecules, the overall pull, inward, an inward pull. There's nothing over here to negate the pull. And that's what's going to give water especially, but all liquids, kind of like a skin effect. That's why if you were to jump off a really high bridge into a pool of water, or not a pool, a lake, some body of water, you can really hurt yourself pretty bad because from a certain height, it's almost like your body slamming into concrete. Don't try this at home. Just take my word for it. Surface tension. Again, surface tension of water is so great because all of these intramolecular forces or these arrows that I'm drawing would represent hydrogen bonds. Okay, let's talk about cohesion and adhesion. That prefix co, cohesion, molecules are attracted to each other. So especially water molecules, but any liquids, but especially water molecules, they're sticky to each other. This makes me think of when you're driving in the rain. Now, maybe I'm the only crazy lunatic that does this, but when I'm the passenger, not the driver, I notice how when the rain droplets are running down the windshield, if a rain droplet gets too close to another rain droplet, they almost suck together like a magnet. I kind of think it's fun to watch. I know, I'm a little nerdy. You know you're thinking you've noticed this same thing. Or if you have two water molecules and you can kind of draw them near to each other, and then all of a sudden they'll stick together and make a big water molecule. That's cohesion. They're sticky for each other. Adhesion, they're attracted to other surfaces. Now, a good example of showing adhesion and cohesion at work is when we're thinking about a graduated cylinder. I'm not gonna draw the little lines. If you've been in science for very long, we know that when you have water in a graduated cylinder, it makes this meniscus, okay? Well, the reason why water travels up the side and forms this little meniscus up here is because of adhesion. The water molecules are sticky for the glass container, so they kind of travel up the side. But also here, the water molecules are representing cohesion. They're sticky for each other. Okay, so adhesion, hesion. That makes us think of a glue. Cohesion, they're sticky to each other. Adhesion, they're sticky to a different substance. I've also seen this graduated cylinder drawn where you've got like these happy water molecules and this water molecule might be holding on to the surface. And he's smiling because he's happy. So this would be adhesion. And then if we have another water molecule here, these are holding hands. He's happy too. And this would represent cohesion. And then let's draw our one more. He's holding on here, cohesion, but he's sticky here, adhesion. Now, not all liquids act like water. Water, very adhesive. And so that's why it forms that meniscus that we were talking about, a concave meniscus, where we have our graduated cylinder 
and we have water making a concave meniscus. Let's label that water. But now I'm going to age myself here. When I was young, thermometers were made with mercury. Now, you know, mer mercury causes cancer, so we don't do that anymore. But if you ever look at an instrument with mercury in it, mercury has a convex meniscus. It's going to poke up a little bit. And that's because the cohesion force of mercury is stronger. So the way the liquid bends is going to depend on the adhesion forces and the cohesion forces. So we have this convex meniscus because the adhesion force is stronger than the cohesion force. So it's grabbing on here stronger. But in mercury, the cohesion force is the strongest. So that's why you're gonna get this bubble in the middle. It's kind of crazy, I know. Wetting. Now this has everything to do with surface tension, which also has everything to do with the intramolecular forces, the hydrogen bonds. So when you have a liquid like water who ha that has very high surface tension and very high intermolecular forces and it makes a bubble, not much of this surface of the liquid is touching the surface of this board. When the surfaces don't touch very much like here, it is not a very good wetting liquid. If we have a liquid with less surface tension, that bubble is gonna spread out a little bit and touch more of the surface. That means it's better at wetting. I know that's kind of weird to say, wetting. It does have some surface tension, but not as much surface tension, so the bubble spreads out even more, which means it's a better wetting liquid because it has less surface tension. That force isn't as strong. And then for a liquid to be a total wetting liquid, the liquid ne would need to not bubble up at all and just completely spread out. So high surface tension leads to less wetting. And it's just because of those forces. Remember, high surface tension, those forces are being attracted all inward. That's what's drawing this up into a bubble. So high surface tension, less wetting. Lower surface tension, like here, would equal more wetting. Now there is a way to make a liquid that isn't very wetting a little more wetting. I know that feels so weird to say, right? I know it must feel weird to listen to. A wetting agent is a substance that lowers surface tension. And if you can lower the surface tension, that bubble is gonna flatten out a little bit and wet the surface better. The way the substance lowers the surface tension is by disrupting the intramolecular forces. All the molecules are holding hands to each other and they're holding on to each other very, very tightly. But if you add something to that liquid and it causes them to not hold on to each other so tight, that bubble is going to relax a little bit and wet the surface better. Detergents are good wetting agents. This is why when we wash our clothes, we have to put some soap in there with it. If we just washed them in water, water is not a very good wetting agent because it has such a high surface tension due to those hydrogen bonds. But when we add soap to our water, it decreases the hydrogen bonds, decreases the surface tension, makes that water a better wetting agent, then we can get in and clean all that stuff out. That's the whole purpose of our washing our clothes to begin with. Capillary action. This might be my last property of water. This is the rise of liquids up a narrow tube. This is why when you put your straw in a cup, let's say here's our liquid and we put a straw in, most of the time that liquid fills up to above the water line. That is called capillary action and it's due to the adhesion and cohesion forces. Especially if this is a cup of water, this water is going to rise up. Since it's so adhesive, it's going to grab onto the side of the straw and climb up just a little bit farther than the actual level of the water. Now, that liquid will rise up into that narrow tube until the adhesive and cohesive forces equal the gravitational force. Because remember, gravity is pulling everything down and gravity is even working on the liquid in the straw. This is how plants get their nutrients in water. If you think about a plant, and you know, here's its stem above the ground, and then we've got the ground, and then it's got all of these roots. Roots are very narrow tubes, and we need the water to be able to travel up and into the stem and out to the leaves. Capillary action. Very, very, very important for keeping our plant life alive and well. 
Okay, so that is everything that you need to know about the properties of liquids, especially the properties of water. Don't forget, stay tuned for the next video. It's going to be about intramolecular forces. Until next time, bye y'all.